Okay, welcome to chapter 15. In this chapter, we'll be talking about direct current circuits. And then in the first video, we will talk about electromotive force and potential difference. In the second video, we will talk about Kirchhoff's laws. And then in third video, we will talk about voltmeter, ammeter, shunt, and multiplier. And then in the fourth video, we'll be talking about potential divider, potential meter, and also with storm bridge. So let's start our first video. If the battery has no internal resistance, therefore E equal to IR, E is the electromotive force, and then the potential difference across the battery, which is also equal to the potential difference across the resistor, is equal to IR. And then just now I equal to E over R, so now you know that V equal to E. So you know that when the battery has no internal resistance, the potential difference across the battery is equal to the electromotive force of the battery. Now, if the battery has some non-zero internal resistance, normally we denote the internal resistance as R and then the electromotive force as EMF or E. Okay. Now, if the battery has internal resistance, then E equal to IR plus IR. And then the potential difference across the battery, which is also equal to the potential difference across the resistor, is equal to V is equal to IR. And then you know that it is just a fraction of the electromotive force. So when there is really some internal resistance inside the battery, the potential difference across the battery will be smaller than the electromotive force of the battery. Okay, if you are asked to give the definition of the electromotive force, then this should be your answer. Electromotive force E of a source is the energy per unit charge supplied by an electric source to drive a charge around a complete circuit. Okay, you still remember what we have learned in the chapter electrostatic? If we are asked to give the definition of the potential, then this should be the answer. That is, electric potential at a point is the work done in bringing a unit charge from infinity to that point. However, when it comes to direct current circuit, Electric potential at a point in a direct current circuit is the amount of electric potential energy possessed by one column charge at that point. And therefore, the electric potential difference between two points in a circuit is the amount of electric potential energy transferred or dissipated per unit charge to drive that charge across two points. You notice that for the EMF, I use the word supplied, but for the potential difference, I use the word dissipated. Okay, because this is the energy given to the charge, and then this is the energy used by the charge. Okay, so please choose your words correctly. So now from the definition of the potential difference, you know that potential difference is equal to the energy transfer divided by one charge. And then when you differentiate this with time, and then you differentiate this with time, you know that this is power and then this is current. And therefore power equal to voltage times current P equal to VI. And then you still remember Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that the electric current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across the conductor, provided the temperature of the conductor remains constant. So you know that V equal to IR, and then R is all resistance. So by using Ohm's law, V equal to IR, you also know that power equal to I square R is equal to V square over R. Okay, I need to remind you that normally in the Kirchhoff second law, you will use this. The summation of the electromotive force is equal to the summation of the potential difference. Okay, because this is the energy supplied to the unit charge, and then this is the energy used by the charge. Okay, 
for electromotive force is the energy supplied to the charge and then the potential difference is the energy dissipated by the charge okay so you know that actually this is exactly the conservation of energy but then i will talk about it in the kirchhoff law which is in the next video okay Okay, now a battery is connected to a resistor. And then you know that the current flowing inside the circuit is like this. The power dissipated by the resistor is equal to I square capital R, which is equal to VI, which is equal to V square over R. This is important because the power dissipated by the internal resistance is equal to I square small r, not the capital R. Okay, and then now I want you to prove that the power dissipated by the resistor is maximum when the resistance of the resistor is equal to the internal resistance of the battery. So, if you want to prove this, you have to know that when the power dissipated by the resistor is maximum, P is maximum. Therefore, dP dr is equal to 0, and then d square p over dr square is smaller than 0, so it's a curve like this, okay? And then, you still remember this formula? That means that the upper part is u, the lower part is this one, and then dP dr is equal to v du dr minus u dV dr over v square, and then by using this formula, you know that the upper term must be equal to zero. And therefore, this whole thing is equal to zero. And then you know that E square can cancel out each other. This one can also cancel out. Okay. And then finally, you, you are left with this term. And then finally, you can prove that the power dissipated by resistor is maximum when the resistance of the resistor is equal to the internal resistance of the battery. Okay, let's do some questions. A battery with an EMF E and an internal resistance R is connected in series with a resistor of resistance R. The potential difference across the terminal of the battery is, okay, this is the circuit. First of all, you find the current, which is equal to the EMF over R plus R. And then you know that the potential difference across the battery is equal to the potential difference across the resistor. Okay, and then V equal to IR, therefore you get this answer. A circuit used to determine the internal resistance of a battery is shown. You know that the voltmeter is connected in parallel with the battery and then the emitter is connected in series with the circuit. The variation of the voltmeter reading with the emitter reading is shown like this. The internal resistance of the battery can be determined from... Okay, you know that E equal to V plus IR. Then you use this equation and then you change it into y equal to mx plus c. So then the y-axis is the v and then the x-axis is the i. Then you know that the gradient is equal to negative internal resistance. So your internal resistance can be determined from the gradient. And then c is the y-intercept and therefore from this graph you know that this is the EMF. A battery of EMF 12 volt and internal resistance 0.05 ohm is connected to a 2 ohm resistor. What are the potential difference across the battery and the power dissipated by the internal resistance of the battery? You know that E equal to I R plus R. And therefore you can get the current. And then the potential difference across the battery is V equal to I R. Okay, so this is the potential difference across the battery, which is equal to the potential difference across the resistor. And then now I want you to find the power dissipated by the internal resistance of the battery, which is P equal to I square R, where the R is the internal resistance. Okay, if I want you to find the power dissipated by the resistor, then P equal to I square capital R. Okay, so by using this formula, you can get the power. 
no matter which formula you are using, you still are able to get the same answer. A resistor R is connected to a cell of EMF E and internal resistance R. The terminal potential difference of the cell is V. The expression for the internal resistance R of the cell is... Okay, once again, you use this circuit. And then you also know that V equal to IR and then E equal to IR plus R. From these two equations, you are able to get small r equal to capital R times E over V minus 1. Okay, so you are able to get this answer. A bulb dissipates a power of 60 watt when connected to a power supply of 240 volt. If the bulb is then connected to a power supply of 110 volt, find the current flowing through the bulb and the power dissipated by bulb. Okay, P equal to V square over R equal to I square R equal to VI. And then you know that you are now only given power and voltage. Therefore, you want to find the resistance first. And then since the bulb is still the same, therefore the resistance is still the same. And then now you can find the power dissipator when it's connected to a power supply of 110 volt. And then you can also find the current by using P equal to VI or equal to I square R. Okay, so in the next video, we'll be talking about Kirchhoff's laws.